Good morning, afternoon, evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm at AM and Motorcycles in Letchworth. They are a Suzuki dealer, as you can quite clearly see, and they also stock Royal Enfields. Slight bit of a uh, horsepower difference and uh, engine size difference to what I'm used to. But today, I'm taking out this beast. This is a 2018 Royal Enfield Himalayan, or Himalayan, or whatever you want to call it. 411cc I believe it is, around 25 horsepower, so not the most powerful thing in the world. So first impressions, seat's very comfortable, bring her to life. It's quite a nice little analogue screen. Oh, that thump of that single. It's obviously a very basic bike, these are like four and a half five grand on the road I'll put it on the screen now and it's just a bare bones back to basic bike that's not designed to do anything major no thrills kind of bike one of the other channels people on my channel tend to watch is uh, Norley from Itchy Boots essentially her channel started I think when she bought a bike in India one of these and essentially rode it back to the Netherlands which is insane I'm five nine I can flat foot it very easily, like I think I'm just over 5'9", I don't know, I'm about 31, 32 inch inseam, I can flat foot it very easily. It's a really comfortable seat actually, like it's um, it's not very sculpted or anything, but it's very, very comfortable. I do feel like I'd need to tilt the handlebars back towards me a, bit, a little bit because they feel like they're a little bit too far forward for me. And we're on a 5 speed gearbox on this, which is 1 down 4 up obviously. This screen, I'm getting quite a bit of wind off it. It's not buffeting at all. Like, I'm not getting any buffeting, but I, you probably can hear it's very windy. I'm used to 160 horsepower on my Super Adventure, so I'm not, I'm never expecting this to be a, a big, powerful kind of thing that's going to blow my socks off. But it's not bad, you know. There's still power there. The only thing that I'm actually not massively impressed by are the brakes they're a little bit non-existent like they work but you definitely have to give them a good old squeeze to get them to get them to do what you want again i'm used to twinned brimbos so maybe i'm spoiled but yeah they're definitely i'd like a bit more power there like if i pull on hard now it it does stop but just not very well you've got abs of obviously which is I believe switchable on the new model so you can turn the rear ABS off on the new model suspension wise it's not bad actually like it's not it's nothing impressive like I wouldn't go and jump off it kind of thing but the ride here's off a speed bump here and I mean it's completely fine like it's soaking up all the bumps really nicely it's not jarring at all and it doesn't feel wallowy look yeah it's it's planted it's really really good do you know what i think it's actually quite a nice little riding experience there's no sort of um pressure to go fast you don't actually feel the need to go fast at all the throttle's a little bit on and off at slow speeds but it's not too bad it's it's quite um like when you're on the throttle it's completely fine there's just a see there but then to be fair, that any Euro 4, Euro 5 bike has a bit of an on and off throttle now. And you see a lot of people will get throttle spaces and whatnot to solve that issue. Is that another one? There's another one. <laughs> go, 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 go. There you go. So, I mean, that was 50, so it's not too bad. I want to try and overtake. <laughs> Oh, 70 mile an hour. So it's very, very windy at the moment, but that is just over 70 mile an hour, and it doesn't feel like it's screaming its nudges off, if that makes sense. It actually did it quite easily. It didn't take a, a month to get there. You would need a screen on it because it's a bit like the wind is hitting me there. And the, I have to say, the gearbox is very smooth. Very smooth. There's an, I can't believe there's another Himalayan just there. So round the corners, it handles. I think I don't think these tyres are probably the best for it, you know. 
So while we're stuck behind this van, down here you've got your time, you've got your odometer, which I think you can just go through. I don't know how you go through that. Oh, I guess it's this button here. You've got your time, you've got your gear indicator on the far left here. Uh, you've got your trips. I don't think there's an MPG on there, but I mean, it's, it's a very frugal bike anyway. Got temperature, you've obviously got your fuel gauge, uh, revs, and you've got this little compass down in the corner here. Like I said, on the new model, there's a, a new LCD type screen that you can connect to the app and have that give you directions, uh, which is quite nice. I think it's only turn by turn like it is on most bikes. The thing I'm finding straight away is it's a very easy bike to ride. It's not encouraging me to ride like a bit of a twat, which is, um, if, if you uh, are regular viewers of the channel, you'll know that's difficult for me. <laughs> I wouldn't sit on the motorway for hours and hours on end because it doesn't have that top end power and it doesn't have the wind protection to make that worthwhile doing or make it a comfortable ride kind of thing. Because this is not quite fast enough. It can do it, but I think if you're trying to push 70, 80 mile an hour on a motorway for a long period of time, it gets to the point where the bike's living its life nearly at 7,000 RPM the whole time, which will end up causing more problems. The valve clearance services will be more expensive and whatnot. Talking of servicing, one thing that's not as great with this is the service intervals are only every 3,000 miles. And I think you have to get this, the valve clearances checked either every service or every other service. So if you are comparing this bike-wise to another manufacturer, take everything into consideration. Because if you're going, the Himalayan's only five grand and you're looking at something else that is maybe like a grand more, if you're doing like 10,000 miles a year, this will end up being more expensive to run based on service cost. Customer service wise, the guys in A&M Motorcycles have been really nice. We went there originally because it's a Suzuki dealer as well, like I mentioned. But we went there to look at the V-Strom for Emma before she bought her NC. And they were lovely, really, really nice guys. For this entire ride, I haven't felt the need to sort of be, not, not necessarily aggressive, but on my bike, if someone's doing 45 on a national, I will overtake them, even if there's two or three cars, just because I can. On this bike, I mean, this guy's doing 35 and a 40. I just don't care. It's like, oh, it's fine, we'll get there. And I think that's probably what the bike's a bit about. Relax, enjoy yourself, and you will get there and have a nice time doing it. I don't know if you, you guys watch uh, Nathan the Postman. He's got a fleet of Royal Enfields and posty bikes and all sorts of stuff down in Devon. And he has just put a new cam inside the engine to essentially like give it a little bit more power. I think the, just the profile of the cam is slightly higher, which means it peaks a bit higher. I think it's something like crazy, like 40 or 50% more power. On a bike that's only got 24 horsepower, you'll notice a massive difference in that. It's quite a nice little bike to be fair, it's very um, retro looking. And I quite like these double front mud guards. they look quite nice. Let's have a look at that front brake, shall we? So it's an unbranded front brake, which might be why I think the unbranded brakes. On the new ones, I believe they're Bybri, which is like a, a subsidiary of uh, Brembo. So they should be a lot better. Would I buy one? I don't know. I think if you need a bike just to poodle around town, maybe do some light touring and like kind of enjoy yourself, this is definitely something you could do it on. It's not a performance bike. It's not a high-end tourer or anything like that but it's it's very good here's a test pulling onto a national road fifty sixty seventy Come on, girl. 75. I shouldn't be reading my speed out. There's 80 mile an hour. And it's happily doing that. 
I do have the throttle completely pinned and then we're coming up a hill now and it's sort of dropped off a little bit still doing 70 75 and then if I wanted to roll off and just sit at 70 I can do maybe it's because I'm used to being on my bike but I do feel like I'm uh, not vulnerable but I do feel small on the road I do feel like I'd maybe want to upgrade the headlight so you could make sure you're seen maybe put some uh, aftermarket fog lights on sitting at this speed there is a bit of vibration coming through my feet it's not coming through my hands at all my hands are completely fine as a like high speed road test that was fine it would do 80 mile an hour it wasn't complaining at all which was really lovely the ergos are quite nice my feet are under the back of my thigh they're not tucked and they're not at a right angle but they're they're comfortable enough let's try that rear brake shall we when we come around this corner oh wow the, the rear brakes a lot better than the front <laughs> so i think highlights of this bike for me suspension is really good like for such budget suspension it's very good for just riding around town and stuff the gearbox is lovely and smooth like really really nice definitive gear changes but they're not clunky at all it's very easy to get it into gear and then i think just general comfort and like usability of something this budget and this cheap is just really nice things i would have to change like i said about 50 times now that front brake needs to be upgraded there's just not enough bite there you can do that by way of adding better pads uh, i mean you can realistically you could probably change the master cylinder it looks like it has got braided lines underneath that i'd want to get a slightly bigger screen um, for the motorway stuff and probably put in that cam like I said about earlier, the um, the engine cam that's got slightly higher profile, just to give it that little bit more power. Like sitting at motorway speeds, it's fine. But if you can just make that a little bit easier, the only other negative for me is the fact that the service intervals are every three 3,000 miles. It's not awful if you're not doing a stupid amount of mileage, but if you are doing... I mean, I do twelve to 15,000 miles a year, and that's without all my extra YouTube stuff. So if they're 350, 400 quid at a pop, it's going to get really expensive to run this bike. But if you're only doing 5,000 miles a year or 3,000 miles a year or whatever, then happy days. What are your thoughts? What, what do you think about these? I think uh, looks can be very divisive, but I think once you've sort of started getting used to it, they actually, they're not bad. I quite like it. It's a, it's a very retro kind of bike i'd want to change all the indicators to make them a little bit more modern maybe want to upgrade the switch gear although having said that it's sort of fine i'm actually really impressed for such a budget bike i think that's um it's far better than i thought it was going to be give these guys a shout they're a m motorcycles in letchworth which is in hertfordshire and it's very light very light which i really like neutral's easy to find thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.